once you have the large windmill or the small windmill blades sanded to the desired shape, they're balanced, they're ready to go, one thing you can do is there is this Krylon paint. It's a barbecue and stove version. You can use just about any enamel paint. Just put it on, sand it down a little bit, put it on. And then Walmart has this clear coat. It's about a dollar a can, so it's really cheap. You can buy three or four of them. Put on a thick coat, let it set, put it on again, put it on again, put it on again. This is going to penetrate the wood and it's going to seal it. So it's going to make it pretty much waterproof and UV resistant for about five or six years without having to mess with it. I painted wood around our place here and it's going on 10 years. It's outlasted pressure treated wood. It's just regular wood. So this stuff really works good. Okay, for you woodworking guys out there who saw me put this together like this and rolled your eyes because you've got this thick chunkiness right in the middle and it, well, it's not how woodworking guys usually do it. I'm going to show you a simple way to get these together and it's not going to be so thick. It's going to look a lot nicer and it's also it's going to take a little more time, but it's going to make the weight more centered to the blade versus leaning forward like this extra blade. Okay, we're gonna keep these together because we've got it marked. You're gonna mark this with a pen here. You're gonna mark it with a pen here. Okay, then you're gonna flip it over. You're gonna repeat the process on this side. You're gonna mark it with a nice pen here. And you're gonna mark it with a pen here. Now we're gonna take these apart. So another reason not to, that's why I told you not to glue it earlier. We know a couple things. We know that our wood is one and a half inches thick, and we know that half of one and a half is three quarters of an inch. You'll we'll see why in just a second. We're gonna lower this blade all the way down. tooth as high as it possible at the high point. Lower the blade down. Make sure the saw is unplugged because we're touching the blade. Set it at, at three quarters of an inch. You're going to make sure you're at the high point of where the blade is. Alright, you want to line the blade up just like that. That's where your first cut's going to be. Then you're going to make several progressive cuts this direction. If you have a dado blade, which is a wider blade that cuts like three quarter inch slots in wood, by all means, now's the time to break it out and use it because it'll make this a three pass deal versus what we're about to do. We're gonna use this to make sure the wood stays square. Hopefully your saw came with one. We're gonna put it like that and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start there. We're gonna keep our hands away from the blade and we're gonna make several passes. Here it goes. Now that we have that, we're going to keep doing these passes and just eventually take all the wood out. we have so far. You want to make sure that you keep your hands way over here on the way over here. You don't want to go near this because it's real easy to, to mess up when doing this. So here we go.
Now, if you notice, that's what you, sh you should have something that looks like that. And you're going to get fragmented with wood chips here, so just be careful when you do this. This is a really dangerous process right here. And I'm going to show you a close up of how I hold my hands. You do this. You want to lock this down here and have your fingers as far away from this as possible. So you want to have your thumb on the outermost per portion and you grab the wood over here. I can't stress safety enough for this. All right, so there we go. Now this right here, you can just chip out. see that. You're going to have something that looks just like that. You're going to repeat the same process for the other blade and you're just going to merge the two together. Now at this point you can glue it so I'm going to go ahead and cut that one. All right we got our second side cut. Now what we're going to do is make sure we got them the right way. Put them like this. Unplug our table saw. Table saw is out of commission. go. These two lock together like that. You have a much prettier design. And you can go at it with the screws again. This time you're going to have to use a shorter screw though because the other screws will come out the back side. So I'm going to go ahead and screw those together. These are one half inch screws. is a much more professional looking hub. You can see that they go right together. 